Hey there, Pirate Crew, and welcome to this second part of how to paint Alpharius. Uh, today, we are going to be working on how to paint the green cloak. Really, all I've done so far is I've just done a very basic zenithal priming just to really kind of pick up some of the details. Uh, of course, this guy isn't Alpharius. We're just using a bunch of different models to demonstrate these techniques. Essentially, all we're going to be doing here initially is glazing uh, this same color that we were using initially on the wings, which is this th uh, phthalo green, over this zenithal priming. So phthalo green is fantastic because it, it has a very high tinting strength, uh, meaning you can stretch a little bit of it a very, very long way. Uh, it's also a naturally transparent color, meaning that the pigment is kind of like these little pieces of crushed up glass that you can see through that are also tinted this kind of green color. Really all we're going to do here initially at least is uh, we're just going to use phthalo green to build up some initial shadows. Uh, this entire uh, this entire painting is really only done with four colors and uh, those four colors are going to be phthalo green, phthalo blue, red shade, uh, black, and white. Uh, and again this is uh, partially just in an effort to show you guys how much can be done with a very simplified palette, but um, it, it's also how I how I tend to like to paint. I don't like to overcomplicate things unnecessarily. You know, when we get to later phases, we can add more complexity and you know more nuance. But at least initially, it's good to stick with a little bit less uh, and just see how far we can take it uh, until it breaks and we have to add more colors potentially. Uh, we can really build up quite a lot of depth uh, just uh, with this. If you actually pick up a bottle of phthalo green, you can really tell how dark it can get uh, just by looking at it. Uh, just when, when the light kind of can't penetrate through it anymore, it gets very, very dark because the pigment is so, so saturated. Here I've mixed just a touch of white with phthalo green and we're just kind of adding back in very few shadows here. And uh, this is really, you know, pretty much the, the main part of the process is building up the highlights with titanium white and phthalo green and then glazing them down with phthalo green until we get to these later phases where we are going to be glazing with phthalo blue red shade. So this is, uh, I, I'm really wanting to show as much of this process as I can. Uh, every now and then I do like to show you guys how to do uh, just a really incredibly smooth process just because it, I, I like to show you guys the level of time and effort that really goes into doing this and of course little bits and bobs are cut out you know things like me hair drying and you know awkward places where I you know accidentally am painting off camera um, you know all in all it, it ends up being very little uh, and this is actually ends up being a fairly approximate amount of time uh, you know notwithstanding the parts that are sped up. Here we're adding in a little bit more titanium white and just really kind of picking out these uh, these big shapes. Sometimes too, uh, something to keep in mind at least with uh, painting highlights and uh, even shadows is that sometimes when we are painting our highlights and our shadows, we don't really get complete coverage in the first pass. So we can go over the same area essentially with the same you know value and the same highlight uh, two or three times until we get really full complete coverage and then we want to mix that color up with a little bit more white potentially. Just something to keep in mind. Um, it's something that I do when I'm doing these slower processes because I know I can get uh, you know a little bit more progressive, a little bit slower value changes which essentially is the only thing that a blend is, a smooth blend is. is it's just a very very slow progression and then later on when we glaze over it we're adding visual confusion to that progression to make it look even smoother potentially and giving it even more depth uh, and so all those things kind of added together, uh, you know, give us this beautiful, beautiful result.
So here I'm kind of uh, shifting gears a little bit uh, and coming in with just a touch of, uh, it's a little bit of a thicker phthalo green essentially to try to really create some some darker, darker zones. Um, of course, it would take quite a few layers of buildup to really cover anything. And so uh, we're, we're only essentially doing so much here. We're gonna do more of this uh, as we go with more phthalo green and then also with uh, the phthalo blue. Uh, but this is kind of where we, f we do these first few rounds of it. And so here actually we are coming in with this phthalo blue and again it's uh, a little bit thicker uh, and all we are doing is we're really heavily marking these zones. Um, the entire goal with the Alfarius piece was to create some kind of very harmonious uh, miniature. Uh, essentially we do that just by using uh, some very few yellows and then greens and blues essentially throughout the entire piece with uh, grays mixed in. Uh, there's very 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 little uh, red except for the red brown grass on the base um, and it's it's a very fun it's a very fun experiment to do. Uh, I would really highly recommend that you do it. Um, essentially, it's it's just kind of doing this. It's just picking a few colors and then kind of orienting uh, the other harmonious colors around it. If you do a harmonious kind of color scheme, just to kind of uh, continue to talk about this while you know I, I begin to glaze. Uh, here on the miniature, um, you know, like l let's say I want to make a harmonious red scheme. Um, essentially, what I would do is I would use purples and potentially even blues uh, and black for the shadows, and then for the highlights I would use orange and red. So, um, but you want to make sure that the majority of the things on the miniature are red or pink, for instance, uh, with those other colors coming in kind of as either accents or uh, just very small additions as you know as you go. You could potentially use some some green accents, you know, at the end of the process just to really pick some things out. But having some kind of complement is always a nice little touch. But make sure it's staying on that side of the color wheel, for instance. And so uh, after we did those, we just did a couple of glazes just to kind of blend in the shadows and then kind of go back over the entire cloak just to continue to smooth it out. Now we're coming back in again with phthalo green and titanium white. Again, you're just seeing a repetition of process. So th this process really isn't uh, a process that I do super, super frequently uh, to get this kind of super clean, clean look. It can be very pleasurable at times, but essentially getting something really smooth really comes down to a very pure technical uh, process, which can get a little bit boring at times. You know, it, I, I find that working a little bit more fast and a little bit more aggressive tends to get me really interesting results uh, within a relatively okay amount of time. And so at a certain point though when you are rendering or cleaning and uh, just really really refining something over and over and over again it it, it just kind of becomes a little bit monotonous uh, I'm not saying that this tutorial necessarily is doing that but throughout the course of painting this this model it, it certainly can happen uh, where you're just painting the same thing and just refining and, and essentially uh, I've, I've talked to a few colleagues and even a few students about this like when you are painting a piece for a competition you really you really want to not look at it for a while after you finish it because you just put so much effort into it i'm not saying that that's exactly where you should take every single miniature piece but if you're doing something for a, a competition or a high level type of tournament or competition you need to understand every nook and cranny of that miniature otherwise you probably haven't done quite enough work on it and so here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just very, very loosely layering in a couple of highlights into the shadow zones. The sh shadow zones, uh, they just have a lower value key, and so you can use some pastel colors very thinly to bring in some highlights. And what we're going to do here momentarily is we're going to glaze over those quite significantly so that there's still a shift in values in, in the shadows. Um, but it's not super, super significant. It's very, it's, it's supposed to be a very subtle thing, just indicating that, uh, you know, there's still light going on over there. It's just, it's just not as intense as the other parts of the cape.
And so here at the very end, once again, we are just gonna do uh, a little bit of glazing just to really bring everything together one more time and really wrap this part of the model up. So. Um, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this segment of really going through and creating this beautiful looking cloak like we had on Alpharius. Coming up next in this tutorial series is going to be a tutorial on advanced non-metallic metal. So I'm really excited to show that one to you guys. And then after that, we're going to jump into a different segment where we're going to be working on some of the techniques that I used on the orc from black sun miniatures that big orange orc i'll have a little bonus video for you guys too after this is all said and done on free hands anyway you guys thank you again so much for all of your support i can't thank and appreciate you guys more i hope you guys are having an excellent spring and summer season and we will see you next time here on pirate monkey painting bye